Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, etiquette is about far more than just knowing which fork to use at a meal. Here to share some advice for navigating everyday situations, we welcome etiquette expert Sharon Schweitzer. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Helen. Good to be here. Um, so let me ask you this, there are a couple things, but let's start with how can you say no to someone politely? Um, and there are many different situations. Well, let's start with, say, someone says, can you get together um, next week? You really don't want to get together with them, say? and and you have to say no. How do you do that? Modern manners put us in that position a lot. Yeah. And so you have to be able to say, you know, this is my boundary and I really don't want to get together. So what you would do is say, next week. But you want to do it nicely without hurting anybody, anybody's feelings, right? You do. So what you would do is say, you know, next week really doesn't work for me. We're fully committed. Uh, why don't we do this? Let me get back in touch with you. Um, I've got your name and I've got your number. So let me get back in touch with you at a time when our schedule frees up. And then you never get back in touch with them? Well, <laughs> if you really don't want to get back yeah. in touch with yeah. them, then you don't. Right. What are some other situations where you're faced with no? you know, that you have to say no, I'm trying to think. Well, there could be a lot of different situations. Right. It could be holidays. It could be requests for dinner. It oh, could be right. requests for the movies, a picnic, um, getting together for Labor Days coming up. Right. So there are lots of different times whenever people want to get together. And maybe you're, you know, it's either inconvenient for you or there's not... It's just not, not something you want to do? That's so right. You, but being honest is pretty, is part of it, isn't it? Yes, okay. it is. It is. Because etiquette is about being kind. It's about honesty and it's right. also about integrity and you don't want to hurt their feelings. Right. So sometimes you have to be diplomatic about the fact that you'll get back in touch with them and you don't get back in touch with them because there really isn't a good time. Right. There isn't. All right. Let's talk about uh, manners on, on the airplane because we see lots of bad manners now on the airplane. You, one of your thoughts is you say is, is to think about respect. That's right, because one of the things that's causing so much air rage right now is the fact that people are losing control. They think that they can be in control of their air travel, and right. really we have to realize that we are at uh, the hands of Mother Nature, right. and we can't control the weather. So whenever we go traveling, we need to realize that we've got the mechanics of the airplane, we've got the weather, and we need to be as polite as we can be. Right. because. We don't control how that airplane flies. And we're in a tight space, and someone has to be in control, and usually has to be the flight attendant or the pilot, right? So you have to respect their, their authority. And then you're, you're cramped in uncomfortable situations. And I would think you have to think ahead, too, is there are going to be delays. There's going to be a problem. There are going to be delays. And flying is a privilege. It's not a right. Right. So our ability to take to those friendly skies is something that we get to do as a privilege. And so we need to be very cognizant of that and just take a book, take a puzzle, download GoGo InFlight. Right. Make sure your Wi-Fi and all your devices are charged up so that you have something to take care of the time that right. you're going to spend and waiting. And don't act like you're sitting in your living room. You know, don't take off your shoes and act like you're sitting in your living room. You know what I'm saying? That's right, because yeah. you're not. You're in you're public. Not, you're so. in public. Um, cell phone etiquette. What do you see, let's say, at, uh, at restaurants? Well, one of the things that I think we need to remember the best rule I can give you for cell phone etiquette is love the one you're with. Okay. Spend time with the one you're with without that cell phone. Have some one-on-one -on -one time and value those relationships because whenever you bring that cell phone out, if I were to bring this cell phone out Look right now... Look at you, devaluing you, our relationship. I am, Helen. What am I doing? Yeah. I'm telling you that right now this is more important than you and right. the viewers. Right. And that's just not fair, is it? So do you hide it? You hide it, don't you? Put it back in your purse or wherever. I do. Right. I have it on quiet or stun and I just don't even have it on the table. Right. So really, this shouldn't even be up here right now. Stun? I didn't know there was a, a mode called stun. <laughs> I think there should be stun for those people who bring it to the table. Mary, oh, I like that. Um, also, you talk about having a 10-foot rule when it comes to the cell phone, too, which is keeping it away as far as possible, right? That's right, because let's think about it. Let's say I receive a call. You and I are sitting here talking, and if I just walk over here, you're going to see me still on the phone, but right. if I go outside the building 10 feet away, then I'm not disturbing anyone. Right. The building who might be peeping out the window to look and see who she on the phone with. Right, right. L let's say we're uh, dining for, we're, at, we're doing a work dinner, let's say, and s your boss offers you alcohol, but you think it's probably not a good idea to drink. What are your thoughts on saying no to that? My thought would be, I would say, you know, I'm going to live vicariously through you. Today I'm not going to have alcohol, but I sure am going to enjoy watching you enjoy Oh, that's it. a good way to say that, to deal with that. 
without offending the person. That's right, because you may enjoy watching them have it. Now, if you don't drink alcohol, maybe uh, you don't do it for religious or spiritual reasons. You can just say, no, thank you. Please enjoy. Okay. Um, when it comes, let's say someone's hosting dinner, hosting a dinner at a restaurant, how do you order? Because I often go off of what the hosts order. What I like to do is if I'm the guest, I will say to the host, what do you recommend? What do you like oh, on the menu? Idea. Because that way the host will give me a high and a low. Right. A good host will because right. a good host has looked at that menu beforehand. And then I'm not going to order lobster thermidor right. or, you know, right. some kind of a, a steak with a, a bone in it that's one of those, you know, man chops right. that's, that's $75. So expensive. Right. Exactly. All good tips, Sharon. Thank you so much. I My appreciate pleasure. that. All right.